you know, there was one time in my life I was going through storms and trials and, 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 and anything that you can imagine was coming at me. At one time, it just seems like, anybody ever been there? It seemed like everything's coming at you at once. It's like, man, do the devil have anybody else to mess with right now? I'm the only one here that, that, that you know, I'm going through hell. Anybody ever been here? I walked miles and miles and miles. I wanted to quit. And I said to the Lord, I said, look, I'm, I'm about ready to quit. I'm, I'm ready to give up. I went to church and did the church thing. You know how we go to church and we put on our church face. Tell somebody, sometimes we got to put on our church face. And how many have done that? I put on my church face. I got in there, you know, praise you said, lift your hand. Praise him, say, praise him, say, say hallelujah, say hallelujah. I did everything that they told me to do. I put on my church gear and my church face, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. But I was broken. I was messed up. It seemed like my life was over. And on my way to church, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to give this up. See, I have friends that are in the music business. And I went to their house some months before this, this my storm came to my life. I went to their house. They had a, a eight car garage. They had a beauty shop in the house, a bowling alley in the house, a movie theater in the house. And pastor, I'm saying, Lord, did you forget about me? And they had cars to go inside the garage. And they had enough cars to sit on the outside of the garage. They had 3,000 square feet over the garage. Something's wrong here. Yeah. And so I'm walking, and I'm walking. I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm walking past. I walk from Shanger 14 to uh, Clawson, Michigan. Clawson, you know what that is. Yeah, 14 and, 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 and uh, the Chrysler Freeway in that area. I'm walking, God. Oh, that's some walking. Somebody got to be real mad to be doing that kind of walking. I'm talking about, what, eight miles or so? Eight, seven, eight miles? So y'all thinking about me getting tired. So I'm walking, I'm man, Jesus, what is up? You know, I can't, I'm ready to give up. I, I can't take it. I can't take it no more. I just want to throw it in the top. And I wasn't thinking about it that God was working on me. Pastor, I got to church. I got to church and went through all of the motion of praise and worship. At the end of praise and worship, I broke down. Tell somebody, it's all right to break down sometimes. It's all right to break down sometimes. I broke down. I fell to my knees at the end of praise and worship, and I got up singing a song called Breath of God. Because I needed God to breathe on me, and I said to the Lord, I said, if you don't breathe on me tonight, I'm going to quit. I'll go sing r and I'll just, I had offers. I had offers to make $1,500 a night playing and singing with, with some very well-known at that time, very well-known artists. And I didn't, I didn't realize at that moment that this was my test. And this was my trial that I had to go through to make me a better person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell somebody, God is not through working on me. He's still working on me. Let me give you a few things that you must do. I know you're tired of me on the keyboard. Let me give you a few things. If you have a pen and a piece of paper, you can write these down. First of all, I had to pay attention, number one. I had to pay attention to what God was trying to do with me. He was working on me. I, I was teaching some young men how to drive, and the guy came to me, he was very anxious. He said, uh, man, I want to drive, can I drive, can I drive? 16 years old, can I drive, can I drive? I said, uh, well, what do you know about driving? What's the most important thing about driving? He said, oh, the brakes. <laughs> How many know that's not the most important thing? Because if you keep continuing to hit the brakes, you ain't going nowhere. I was like, oh, I got it, I got it, the gas. Now you know that's not the most important thing with driving. And so I told him, you know, because he was struggling with it. The blinkers, the steering wheel, the seat belt. No, the most important thing is what? Paying attention. 99.9 .9 out 
percent of driving is paying attention. Not only do you have to pay attention to what you're doing, but you have to pay attention to, uh-huh. How many of you have ever been in an accident? Uh-huh, all right. So y'all got that, right? Number one, pay attention. Pay attention to what God is saying. Pay attention to the seasons. Pay attention to the signs, what God is trying to tell you, what God is trying to take you. Because look at somebody and tell them, God is trying to take you somewhere. I'm still going, don't get mad at me yet, I'm still going. Now we gotta get into position, number two. We gotta get into position. What's the position? Not just the call, or not just because you're called pastor, bishop, and all these things. You know, not just because they put a title on you, and now they're saying you're a minister. You know, some of us get caught up in the titles. I won't stay there, I, pr I promise you. I won't stay on that subject. But some of us get caught up in titles. And, and the real ministry is in the street. The real ministry, how many people have you witnessed to? When I was coming up and I caught the bus, Bishop, when I was coming up, I caught the bus, I would talk to people about Jesus at the bus stop. I was in the grocery store. I would talk to people about Jesus. My position was to tell people about Jesus. That was my position. They called me a little church boy. That's what I was, Pastor. I was church boy. Some of us, we don't want to be called that because, you know, that made us look awkward or weird or peculiar. How many know we're peculiar anyway? If you're not peculiar, are you, are you a servant of the Lord? you got to be a servant of the Lord to be peculiar. It, it goes together. So I'm different. I've always been different. Amen? So we got to get into position. Then we got to find our place. Where's your place? Tonight, there's a game going on. Am I right? That tonight? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you say it. Yes, excited. Yes, yes. It's a game going on tonight, right? So, but there's still no better place to be than in the movement of God. Than to be in the house of God. Than to be in the place where God is working miracles. Than to be in the place where God is blessing. Come on. Than to be in the place where there's an open heaven. I would, I would rather be nowhere else. I can't be nowhere else. I want to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 I want to find my place in the house of the Lord. And I want God to find me in that place where I'm supposed to be. Number four, passionately pursue your purpose. Some of us need to find our purpose in God and what God has intended for us to do. God don't make no mistakes. God has purpose for you. Tell somebody and tell them like you mean it. God has purpose for you. That's why he's not finished with you yet. Number five, we got to find our purpose for God. Number five, I'm sorry. Number six, God says he has called you unto himself. When God told Abraham to take Isaac up to the mountain, how many know that Abraham was struggling with this? Some of us, we don't, we don't think about the struggle that Abraham had. If, 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 if God told you to take your only son, your, your, your son of promise, let's say your son of promise, up to the mountain to kill him, how many of us would be willing to, hey, okay, God, I, well, I got it. How many would, would be happy and willing to do so? So he was struggling with this whole idea. And Abraham says to God, God, what's up? What, what, are you, what, are you, what are you having me doing? And God said to Abraham, he says, look, I called him unto myself. That's the reason, and this is, this is where I'm going tonight, that we can't do what we want, just want to do. We can't just act the way we want to act. We just can't be, how many have heard that statement? This is me. Y'all take it or leave. <laughs> you either like me the way I am or... Huh? <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm picking for somebody tonight. But you cannot be just the way you are. Because God has called you unto himself. 
God has placed his hand upon you. He's placed an anointing on your life. See, your, the anointing that's on your life is supposed to destroy yokes, not in, just in your life, but in the life of others. How many know somebody that's, that's uh, uh, addicted to drugs? The anointing that's on your life is not just to destroy the yokes in your life, but it's, in, it's on your life to destroy the yoke in others. How many will want to walk in a room and the, the anointing that's on your life will cause that person to say, I, I, I don't know, I feel something, but I don't know what this is, but I feel something. I, I just can't, what I was doing, I can't do it no more. Yeah. Y'all with me? Yeah. Yeah. How many, I just, I gotta stop doing this because, you know, I just, there's, they don't know what it is, but it's the anointing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the anointing. Yeah. Hallelujah. And some of us, we, we go so long tr just trying to be ourselves. God calls you unto himself. Tell somebody, God calls you unto himself. He calls you to be a worshiper. He calls you to be a musician. He calls you to be a preacher. He even calls you to be, a, some of us, doctors and nurses and lawyers. He calls you to be in there so that you can make a difference and have influence in, in a secular arena. Y'all see it with me? He calls you to work with finances so you can finance the kingdom. Come on. He called he, he called some of us to be rich. Yeah, yeah. I know you received that notion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bishop, I'm supposed to be rich. Yeah. Young, I'm supposed to be rich. Yeah. Apostle, I'm, okay, it's just four of us, it's just four of us, that's it. I'm supposed to be rich. Because there's so many things that I have to do, and it's gonna take finances. That's right. Can I get a witness? Yeah. God is doing something, and he's not finished working on me. So when I was a pastor, young, young, young lad, I wanted to quit church. I wanted to say, people, mm, forget them, forget all of them. And I tried to do something, now this is crazy. I tried to do something that would cause me not to be a pastor's kid. Oh, Y'all gotta think about that for a minute. How in the world and what can you do to take the call of God off your life? Tell somebody you can't do nothing. Because when he called you, see, he anointed you. I'm in the scriptures. He appointed you. Even before the father, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. He says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Come on. He said, before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. God anointed you. He appointed you. He already got his hand on you. You can try all you want to. You can buck and kick and scream. You might as well go ahead and get it out. You ever got a whooping? Your mama said, your daddy said, get it out. Go on, get it out. Because you're going to get a whooping anyway. God already called you. So go and get it out. Go and if you're going to kick and scream, go ahead and do it. Because you got to do what God called you to do. Whether you like it or not. Amen. If you want to make it in, how many want to make it in? Doc, I want to make it in. And so God tonight, he's healing some people. Church, church can bring hurt sometimes. How many of you ever had church hurt? Some people disappointed you. They made you feel bad. They made you feel like you're not coming to church ever again. I, I don't know if anybody ever felt like that. I ain't going back to that church. No. I quit. God is healing some of that tonight. He's touching your heart tonight. He's mending those, those, those bad feelings, those, those broken pieces. And he's putting them back together. I will be what you call me to be. I say. 